and welcome to Seven Strings. My, my position here is a very broad one. My title is Director of Ski Operations, which includes anything relating to ski, from snowmaking, grooming, ski patrol, safety rangers, ski school, lift operations, anything that has to do with the operation of ski. Snowmaking was discovered by accident back in the early 20th part of the century, around the 1920s, when fruit crops down in the Florida, Georgia area were expecting a severe freeze at night. And with their irrigation systems, they had a process of pumping a chemical in addition with the water through the system and hopefully to spray onto the crops to prevent the freeze process. Well, what happened during the night, the chemical had depleted itself and, and particular system had taken place and in replace of the chemical was compressed air. So you had a combination of compressed air and water being pumped through a nozzle. And when the farmer woke up the next morning, he had three inches of snow across his orange groves. So with that system, they uh, were very disgruntled because they were hoping to prevent their crops from freezing, but now this sparked the whole new process of making snow for our pleasure. So the basic process is a combination of water under pressure and compressed air at a certain pressure level, shot through a specific design nozzle. Once it enters into the atmosphere, the temperature must be below freezing. It falls then as snow. The system that we use at Seven Springs is called a water air system and its prime uh, name is HKD, developed by Herman K. Dupre, one of the owners of Seven Springs. And through this process, water is forced under high pressure water in conjunction with air pressure at the last moment. The nozzle is shaped like my hands. As the water comes through the combination of my two hand points here, it's forced out around each side of the cone. And out at this point here, it bombards itself so that the water particles break into much smaller particles so that they could freeze once they hit the air. So at this last minute out here where this conjunction is, a fine stream of air comes out of the top of the nozzle and hits the apex of these conjunction here and explodes the water particles even further. Once it then freezes, it comes down and hits the ground as snow. And the optimum temperatures, it should be at least 28 degrees lower or much lower humidity. Other ski resorts make their snow with machines that are low to the ground. How are HKD systems different? Okay, to first understand snowmaking system, it takes energy to make snow. We all understand our energy conscious uh, systems that we have now. The most expensive part of making snow is compressed air, to run the compressors to make the compressed air. The ground guns that you see out west or at a number of ski areas are along the ground and they basically have one hose that is compressed air and one hose that is water. They go into a mixing chamber then is forced out into the atmosphere and then made into snow. By it being along the ground, it does not have much what we call cure time because it's only three or four feet above the ground before it hits the ground. The HKD system works under the principle of using high towers so that once the water goes up and the same nuclearization occurs, it has time to fall down and totally freeze before it hits the ground. Now with the energy portion of it, it's CFM of air, uh, cubic feet of air to convert water into snow. The normal ground snowmaking systems operate on what we call a 12 to 1 system. It takes 12 cubic feet of air under pressure to convert one gallon of water into snow. The snowmaking system here at Seven Springs works on a 1 to 1 ratio. One cubic foot of air to one gallon of water. So we efficiently, efficiently can operate 12 of our guns for every one gun that other ski areas would use. Thus enabling us to make a more efficient, better quality snow at a much reduced rate. Well, under optimum conditions, and we talked about that earlier, that we like to have the air temperature below 28 degrees and of a lower humidity. And the humidity is a factor simply because if you take the principle, if, if you try to add water into the atmosphere that's already saturated, 
it will come down as rain no matter how cold it is. It's like adding water to already full glass of wa uh, water to already full glass. So the optimum for us at temperatures in the mid to upper teens at a uh, relative humidity of at least 80 to 60 relative humidity and lower is our optimum. And at the maximum point there, we are able to operate over 550 of our snow guns using a capacity of over 31,000 gallons of water converted into snow every minute. And if you want to visualize that, 31,000 gallons is approximately your average Olympic sized swimming pool being pumped out into our atmosphere every minute. Water flows through the pipe from Lake Chipmunk, which is the holding pond at Seven Springs. The water flows into these pumps, which then transfers the water up to Lake Tahoe or out to the snowmakers. This gives Seven Springs the option to either make snow or recover the water up to Lake Tahoe. Okay, they compress here and then pump it out through the piping on the, uh, above the, the, the concrete here, which goes out into the snowmaking system. And there's miles and miles of piping out there to go to act each individual snowmaking station on the mountain where it's controlled by an air hydrant. Um, these machines here are called fan jets. It's a, uh, a, a fan type snowmaking system. It has an electric motor which actually blows the, uh, the snow away from the unit. The water and air come into it. Where the air comes in, it mixes with the water and it makes a fine spray right about here, which is actually where the crystallization begins. Okay, then basically what it is, the fan blows it away and it adds more water through these outside jets and it's like a snowball effect. Whatever is frozen in here, then this builds upon it. And the colder it gets, the more water you can add to it. And in that amount, it's, it's a little bit variable as to, to what kind of uh, snow it'll make. It can flow as little as uh, 20 to 30 gallons a minute or as much as 60 to 70 gallons a minute, depending on the, uh, the amount of nozzles that you have turned on with these individual valves and the actual size of them. Okay, this is the automated uh, touch screen and this controls uh, the goose bumps and avalanche slopes or you can go to another screen which is the stove valve house and by just touching a button it automatically starts or stops that trail. Um, the, the screen actually depicts what's in the, uh, in the valve house itself which consists of a charge valve and a, and a main valve and then a drain valve and what it does is whenever you initially start the system it opens up a charge valve and it charges up the, the water pressure in the line Okay, then once it reaches a certain point, then it opens up a main valve to feed even more water to that slope. That way we don't have um, too fast of a rush of water going through the pipes. Um, as soon as each individual tower out on the mountain senses that it has water pressure in it, then it turns the air on and basically you have the, the whole system running. Then while it's running, it also has... Uh, Alarms that can come on to tell us whether we blow a line, if we have low water pressure, and then also when we shut it down, if the uh, if the drains open up or they don't. Um, you go back to the uh, the actual valve house, and it tells you the status of all the valves in there. It tells you the actual pressure that that system's running at. Well, there you go. We learned the ins and outs of how snow is made at Seven Springs, from the history of the equipment, how it functions, and the systems used to distribute the water throughout the process. So enjoy all that snow and visit Seven Springs today.